Hi, this is a quick demonstration on using HackRF to inspect the Wi-Fi channels of your local area and visualize traffic. You might approach this problem initially by using a, a, an SDR software such as Cubic SDR or SDR Sharp or GQRX um, or even GNU Radio to um, look at a live waterfall view of the signals around you. And in fact, that's how I initially approach this problem. So um, let's start by doing that. I have my hacker plugged in. I'm going to just go, go ahead and uh, first select the device, select the maximum sampling rate. I want to see a nice wide 20 megahertz of spectrum. And we'll go ahead and hit start. Um, so what I'm looking at here is the what would normally be <laughs> the uh, FM radio station spectrum. However, I actually have a hardware filter installed that filters these out. And uh, the reason I did that is because I didn't want these strong FM signals interfering with some other work that I was doing. Um, so in order to just kind of prove that this is working and sort of look around here, I know we've got some signals around the 460 megahertz band in my area. And in fact, we can see here, we've got some stuff popping up and these are usually digital radios of various um, municipalities in my, in my particular area. So we can see here dedicated streams that are in use. If uh, we'll go ahead and zoom in here with cubic SDR, um, you know, we've got some channels uh, located at here we've got some channels located here and these are very easily identifiable and let's say we wanted to do the same thing for wi-fi and take a look at what wi-fi channels are saturated or oversaturated saturated in our area well um i know that wi-fi runs in two modes um 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz admittedly though i don't know much about the wi-fi protocol um, i just know that it's around there so um, if I were to start to approach this problem, I would start by Googling the Wi-Fi radio frequency information, and there's a handy Wikipedia page here for wireless LAN channels, okay? Um, we're going to stick to the 2.4 gigahertz range right now. So if we look at 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi channels, the channels 1 through 14, it looks like they start at 2.401 um, gigahertz, and they go all the way to 2.495 gigahertz. So basically 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz is, is the range. Um, however, this is interesting. The frequency range for one channel of Wi-Fi is 01 to 23. That's 22 megahertz wide of a channel. Now, the hack RF that uh, I'm using here can only read or view 20 megahertz at once. So if we go to the 2.4 gigahertz channel um, and start you know, poking around in here, um, this is not a very helpful view because one single channel transmission fills up the entire waterfall view. I can't get a clear picture of what all the channels are because of the um, uh, capabilities of my SDR. Now, you might ask, how do I get more samples per second? How can I increase my view? Well, unfortunately, that's, that's dictated um, exclusively by your SDR hardware. Uh, in, in our case, the Hacker F1's maximum samples per second is 20 million, and that's the most megahertz that we can see is 20 megahertz at once. It cannot go up further than that. There are other options, such as a Blade RF um, off the top of my head, which can go to 60 megahertz. But again, if we're looking at Wi-Fi, 60 megahertz, that's only a couple of channels, uh, uh, or one and a half channels of, uh, uh, actually 20, three channels of information, right? 20, 40, 60. Um, that won't give us a full clear picture of what's going on here. Um, so you might say we're, we're kind of out of luck here. Uh, however, the Hacker F1 has a trick up its sleeve. Uh, and it's a it's a relatively new-ish trick that was implemented in more recent versions of the firmware. 
uh, and it's called sweep mode. And what sweep mode does effectively is retune your center frequency very, very, very fast. In fact, in fact, so fast that you can build a waterfall view of a, a frequency range beyond 20 megahertz. And in fact, the, the, the sweep functionality is, is quite impressive. It can sweep from zero megahertz to six gigahertz almost once per second, uh, which is pretty incredible when you think about it, um, when you think about the device only being able to read 20 megahertz at a time. It's reading that 20 megahertz across multiple gigahertz in, in less than a second. So you might ask, how can we enable sweep mode to see a larger swath of the spectrum here? Unfortunately, software such as Cubic SDR, SDR Sharp, um, they are not aware of this highly specialized functionality of uh, the HackRF1. So we need to use a tool that is specially designed to do this. Uh, thankfully, there exists one ready-made tool uh, called Q Spectrum Analyzer. So let's check that out. I'm going to go ahead and stop this capture with Cubic SDR. I'll go ahead and move this off here. Uh, Q Spectrum Analyzer is a Python application, and it's hosted in GitHub. The Python application can be installed like any other pa Python package using pip. So we'll go ahead and run the installation now using pip install, a Q Spectrum Analyzer. More recent versions of Python, if you're using them, if you're using them, uh, play a lot nicer if you use the dash dash user uh, command to install your packages to your local user. Um, I had some issues running this earlier without that. So once Q Spectrum Anal Analyzer is installed, we can go ahead and launch it using python-m for module Q Spectrum Analyzer. So here's what Q Spectrum Analyzer looks like. Uh, it's, it, it's very similar in that we have a, an, an FFT on top and a waterfall on the bottom, except this one is specialized for HackRF Sweep. And if, in fact, if we take a look at the settings here, um, it uses HackRF Sweep. In fact, it's using a special version of HackRF Sweep that I slightly modified. Um, we can pass the parameters to the HackRF sweep application, uh, in this case, ampl amplification, uh, LNA, uh, different gain settings here. I found these ampl amplifier off and gain of 24 and 24 work best for me. Uh, and the sample rate, 20 megahertz. So we'll, we'll go ahead and start with these settings here. Um, the frequency range here is defaulting from zero to one giga, one million megahertz, which is one gigahertz. Uh, we need to change this to the frequency that we are interested in, which is uh, 2.4 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. Um, the bin size, this is where things get interesting. So you might ask, um, how is it that the HackRF can retune and show you a real-time FFT of such a large frequency range? And the answer is that it, it shows you not all of the RF information in its entirety. It, it averages it out. And so this bin size is representative of, or asking you really, um, what is the average uh, uh, size of the uh, sampling that you want to show in your graph. And so the larger the bin size, the coarser or the less resolution we'll see in our graph. And we could play with this uh, and see what the effects are. Um, in our case, because we're only going 100 megahertz and the HackRF is capable of looking at this in 20 uh, megahertz increments at a time, um, we can effectively um, have a very small bin size and a very tight resolution because we're not iterating over a very large frequency domain. So I'm going to set this to 20 kilohertz and we can adjust this and see how that um, affects it later. Actually 20 didn't seem to, didn't like 20. So let's go with, uh, see if it likes 100. There is a, a, a limit here and I don't remember what it is. It looks like 80 works, let's do 50. Let's do, all right, let's try 50. So we'll go ahead and start. Now, uh, this looks very erratic. Uh, it's a little dizzying with the graph automatically 
uh, formatting itself every time. So if you right click and select view all, that kind of will even things out here. So, um, you know, we've got our FFT, our live FFT view here. I've enabled peak hold so we can see what all the peak transmissions are. We're starting from 2.4 gigahertz and going all the way to 2.5 gigahertz. And you can see there's quite a lot of traffic starting from right at the beginning of the Wi-Fi channels where, uh, where they start at all the way up to about 2.48. And after 2.48 to 2.5, it, uh, it gets very quiet. So uh, it looks like most of the traffic is around this 2.46, 2.47. Um, these little peaks here might be um, just beacons or, or transmissions. Maybe I'm not actually tuned into these lower channels. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of devices using 2.4 gigahertz in my area. Most of the devices that I have configured in my household are using two point are using the five gigahertz range. Very few use the 2.4. So this could just be indicative of uh, mostly empty channels. Admittedly, I don't know enough about the Wi-Fi protocol and how it operates to say whether this is uh, busy or not. Right. The point of this demonstration was just to say. How can I see more than 20 megahertz of bandwidth um, using uh, HackRF's uh, special suite mode? And in this case, um, it looks like we've uh, we've demonstrated that here. Um, there's some other options that you can try to play with here: the uh, um, uh, gain settings, the color, the color settings of, of your FFT. But really, we're probably mostly interested in this peak hold graph to see you know, what traffic is around and maybe even this, this waterfall view here to see, um, you know, where are the active channels? Uh, where are most of the active channels? Let's see, there's, there, and of course there's a, there's a ton of options that you can right click on here and, and, uh, and, and, and modify, but essentially that's, that's it. Um, use Q spectrum analyzer. If you want to take a look at, you know, more than the 20 megahertz, uh, bandwidth that the hack RF is capable of. Rem um, what you don't get, however, is, um, if you're not interested in the actual IQ data, the raw SDR data, then this is a perfectly acceptable way of visualizing your spectrum. If you are interested in the actual, in processing the actual data, that's a whole nother situation. And, and then, uh, uh, you know, they'll ha we'll have to use a device that has more, um, uh, samples per second in order to look at a whole Wi-Fi channel. There is one thing that I wanted to mention though, uh, that was very interesting in, in reading this, um, wiki on Wi-Fi channels. It appears that each channel is actually overlapping. So channel one overlaps with channel two, which overlaps with channel three, um, all the way down to channel 14 here, which there's a, there's, there's no overlap or very little overlap between channel 13 and 14. And in reading here, it says while overlapping frequencies can be configured and will usually work, it could cause interference and slowdowns, uh, particularly in heavy use. And then they give another uh, little handy chart here of if you wanted to configure your own local Wi-Fi um, access point to have non or use non overlapping channels, you'll need to use channels 1, 6, 11, and 14 to do that on 802.11b or with 802.11g channels 1, 5, 9, and 13 in order to get optimal spacing and have absolutely no um, overlap. Uh, and there's, there's also some other considerations to take in fact here. So for example, with 2.4 gigahertz band, um, there's this, uh, idea that you can bond two of the channels together to create a larger 40 megahertz channel. And it's called uh, uh, channel bonding, um, pres presumably to get more, more throughput and uh, get a faster Wi-Fi. Of course, I, you know, you don't know if these if channels one and two or channels one and five are bonded with this view. Uh, and given the fact that there's channel overlap, it might be very difficult to say whether or not one particular channel is overloaded. So that's, you know, to me, that's very confusing. I would have a hard time dissecting this, this information to say 
oh yeah, switch to channel seven instead of channel one. But what I can see from this information is that there are definitely stronger peaks and bursts of transmission from the 2.45 range to 2.48 range. And from 2.48 to 2.49, it's very quiet. This must, this might be that buffer space that we saw between channel the the last two channels of of channel 13 and channel 14. In fact, we can see here, uh, channel 13 is from um, 2461 to 2483, and then uh, 2473 to 2493. So there is a little bit of overlap, but less less toward the end here. So anyway, that's it. Your mileage may vary when it comes to Wi-Fi. Again, I'm not a Wi-Fi protocol expert, so I can't say for sure, but uh, at least you have a, a methodology now for expanding your view of the spectrum using a tool like Q Spectrum Analyzer and the HackRF in suite mode. Um, I should have said this probably in the beginning, but uh, make sure your HackRF firmware is up to date with the latest version and you're using the latest version of the HackRF tools installed on your system. This will work on Linux, Mac, and Windows. It's totally cross-platform. I've, I've used them on, on both Mac and Windows. Um, just make sure you're using the latest firmware. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks. Have a great day.